Let's do a synthesis problem. Okay. Let's show what are the reagents we need to add to go from this starting material to this product. To go from uh, this starting material to this product. Here's some techniques that would be useful. Let's start by numbering our starting material. Good. Now the purpose of the numbering is to identify carbons which are the same in different pictures. So can we find the number one and the number two carbons in the right-hand picture? Where do you think are the number one and which are, do you think are the number one and number two carbons in the right-hand picture? It might not be possible to tell which it is, but can you take a guess which seems to be the number one and the number two carbons in the right-hand picture? Seems right. That's just a guess. We might be wrong, but as a guess, these seem to be in the most similar position to the number one and the number two over here. Okay. So we'll take a guess, and if that doesn't work, we'll try something else. All right. That means we have to give some new numbers to these carbons, because they didn't appear in the starting material, like three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Now we need to identify if these, numbers, if these numbers are correct, which bonds in the starting material do we need to break in order to make the product? The bond between what and what? Between uh, the number two and the iodide. Right. And if these numbers are correct, which bond do we need to form in the product? The bond between what two atoms? Between uh, number three and the oxygen. This is the bond we need to form? Or I'm sorry, no, uh, between uh, two and the oxygen. That's right. Remember, we were just saying that the number two is going to lose its bond to the iodine. Well, that has to be replaced with something. It could be replaced with this bond to the oxygen. Okay. And we have to ask then, what reagents can we add that will break this bond and form this bond? Well, can you think of any types of reactions? Now that we have these tools here, maybe we, we can now keep going. So with these tools, Let's see if we can figure out what reagents we need to add. Take your time. Yeah, I'm lost on this one. What type of functional group is this? An ether. So we have to ask ourselves, what are the ways that we know to make ethers? Well, we've really only covered one way so far. Do you remember, what, what, what's the way that we've learned to make an ether? What, what are the starting materials that we need to make an ether out of that, that Williamson ether synthesis that we just learned? A halo alkane, a halo alkane, not just a regular alkane. And, then, what? and uh, alkyl oxide. Right. Well, what, which do we have so far? We've got the halo alkane. So that means that the other thing that we're going to have to add is the alkyl oxide. We just have to figure out the correct alkyl oxide to add. Well, one thing we know the alkyl oxide has is a negative oxygen. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of an alkyl oxide. If you want to, you can show the spectator on it as well. That's okay. just a technicality. Now, in order to get this product, who would it be helpful for this negative oxygen to be connected to? Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the alkyl oxide that we're going to add to this starting material to get this product. Well, in order to get this product, what, would, what atom do we want this oxygen to be connected to? A carbon. What number carbon? And who do we want the three to be attached to? Uh, number four. Let me take a step back. Something that you did that was good is you didn't say that we wanted the oxygen to be attached to the number two. Now, a lot of people would say we want the oxygen to be attached to the number two. Well, it's true that eventually we want it to be attached to the number two, but not in the starting materials. We want it to be attached in the product, but obviously it wasn't attached in the starting materials. Obviously, in the starting materials, the number two was attached to the iodine. We need to write what the oxide, oxide looked like before it attacked the starting material. And now who's attached to the number four? Uh, the number five. That's right. And the number six. Who's attached to the number five? Uh, number seven. Number six and seven, yeah. It's always important to list everybody that each atom is attached to. Okay. 
So it looks like if we reacted this haloalkane with this alkoxide, perhaps we would get this product over here, which is the product that we're trying to get. Well, let's test that. Let's draw the mechanism for this reaction now. You can just draw the mechanism between here and here. You can redraw them if you like, which I think that's fine. Is this the right reagent to add then? Did we get the product that we wanted? Yes, we did. In fact, I don't even have, to, even have to bother drawing the product from this mechanism because it's already on the board. This is the product. All I have to add is that we'll also get the sodium iodide. Therefore, we've solved the synthesis problem. We figured out what reagent we had to add to attack this in order to get this product. Okay. What was the answer to the question then? The answer to the question was, This is the answer to the synthesis problem. This is the reagent we need to add to turn the starting material into this product. We went through some important techniques for solving synthesis problems. Very important is to try to number the corresponding carbons. That can be frustrating for students because oftentimes we can't be sure what the right numbers are. We just have to take a guess. And if the numbers don't work out, we have to try something else. Okay. But it turned out here well to guess that the number one and two carbon here on the left were the same as this number one and two carbon. And then we invented new numbers for these over here, and these numbers were very useful to us when we were trying to get the right reagent to add. Putting in these numbers here was very useful when we tried to get this reagent. We don't want to just number the starting materials in the product then, we want to number our intermediates as well. We want to keep numbering most of our pictures as, as a tool for figuring things out. Remember, these are not the official IUPAC numbers. Sure. So it would be perfectly okay if you wanted to call this number one and this number two as long as you were being consistent with yourself. These are just reference numbers for our own use. The other thought process was squiggling the bond we want to break and the bond we want to form. That's another very useful technique, to squiggle the bond you want to break and the bond you want to form. I think this squiggle in particular was very useful in figuring out the reagent that we had to add. Mm -hmm. Because this squiggle made it clear that in the starting materials, the oxygen was connected, well, let's put it this way. In the product, the oxygen is connected to the number two and the number three. But this squiggle made it clear that in the starting materials, the oxygen was only connected to the number three, not to the number two. Putting in the squiggle here makes a big difference, makes it a lot easier to get this starting material. And you also just have to go back on your knowledge of organic chemistry and ask, what type of reaction am I trying to do here? We have to say to ourselves, what ways do I know to make ethers? Well, we've learned one big way, a haloalkane plus an alkoxide. They already gave us the haloalkane, so it's our job to come up with the alkoxide. Let's make sure this reaction makes sense. Which row would we be in in our table here? Yeah, the second row for primaries. And which column would we be in? The uh, non-bulky base. Yeah, again, we have an O minus with a non-bulky base, and that predicts a SN2, SN2 which is good, because that's what we wanted to have happen here. Well, we went through some very important techniques here for doing synthesis problems. Hopefully, you'll, you'll go back and try this problem again with the answer covered up and make sure you can go through that. Does that make sense? Yeah.
let's try this synthesis problem. Let's try to use the same techniques we used on the previous problem, like numbering and squiggles. Okay. 